Welcome to another episode of Oak and Rock Fatherhood, a project co-founded by myself and Anthony Migliorino with the focus of bringing connection and peace to the home. You can be the father you needed as a kid, not the one you had. If you're a great father, you can be better. We're constantly working to improve. So on this channel, on this day, we are talking about raising free kids. Free range kids, free kids, kids free from control. It's not just about what's in the home. It's arming them with the tools needed to go outside the home and still have a defense up against those who are trying to sink their claws into them. But before we dive into that, I'd like to ask you to like, subscribe, and share to the other fathers you think who need the information. And before we go deeper, Anthony, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Yes, sir. I'm doing all right, Zach. No complaints. Life good. I want to make it clear to anybody watching, we didn't coordinate this look. Anthony never has sleeves, so it's just inevitable that one day I'm not going to have sleeves and it's going to link up. So today was that day. Big shout out to AJ Cortez. I'm rocking his Chattistan fucking <laughs> tank top. So we got the Chad status going there. I'm trying to build Chad dads here, so it just makes perfect sense. So Anthony, before we hit record, I was talking to you about a free range parent who laid into me about saying I gave my kids a bedtime. And it, it brought up the discussion of what is free range parenting. And while this episode isn't entirely focused on free range parenting, I think it's safe to say that a lot of what we talk about is in that category, at least heavily into that spectrum of parenting styles. So what is free range parenting to you, Anthony? Well, first off, I would say that free or freedom is a, a very dangerous word nowadays. <laughs> so yeah, you have to be We're careful. already censored. <laughs> um, no, I mean... So to, to be a free range parent, we automatically think that we allow our kids to do whatever they want, which is ridiculous, right? It's, it's stupid. Um, it's, it's the same. It's the the opposite side of the same coin of a parent who over controls, hits their kids, um, instills fear in them on every avenue. So they stay in line. Uh, a free range parent is not one that is permissive and, you know, just lets the kid do what they like. Free range is, it, it's not about being um, uninvolved, right? It's its about teaching your kids to freely express who they are, experience the world on their own terms, but with your leadership, right? To, to I mean, I, I guess it would be more of them understanding their consequences of their own behaviors, as opposed to us as parents inflicting consequences on them. So it has nothing to do with letting your kids run through the forest. Or you know, that's what we like to think. It's more of allowing your kids to uh, take responsibility for things that they're capable of understanding at an early age. Right? This way, they become, they grow up, and they can be functioning adults. Um, so when we strip them of that, when we allow our kids to do whatever they want, eat as much candy as they want, you know, take the family car for a, a test drive when they're six years old, we put them in danger, and that's not our job as a dad. Our job is to protect them. But again, um, you can have bedtimes, right? Kids need structure. They need, they do need rules. It's how we enforce those rules and that structure. What, you know, that's what matters. And a lot of fathers get that wrong, right? They're either over controlling or they're not even involved at all. You know, and to add on to that, the way I see it is when you have people arguing this, anybody pretty much, this is actually undefeated. Anybody that comes arguing this, saying, well, this is wrong, this isn't the right way to do things, are a dysfunctional adult. I've yet Whoa. to have an adult where I'm like, I would swap places with, like, your life is put together, it's a good life you're living, that has come at me arguing this. And the individual who argued, you know, when I had put this out a while ago about my children having a bedtime, saying, well, that's not free-range parenting, that's not peaceful parenting, you're telling them what to do, they were a disaster. I started scrolling through the timeline. I'm like, man, they're, they're, they're raging about politics. They're raging about um, identity things. It just, it was just, I could tell the type of person it was. They didn't have pronouns in their bio, but I really, I was like, I would never want to live your life. You are like chaos in your head and you're telling me this. And so I, I know everything I need to know. The goal is to build functional adults, connected individuals, strong family members. I mean, there's a lot of ways to say the same thing, but there's, there's two things at play here. And I'm wondering your, your thoughts on the second one. The first one is clearly to to keep your children safe and allow them to choose sort of their adventure. They choose the sport they want to play, the life they want to live. They get to live out their personality and their experience, not the one that you didn't have. So that that I know we're agreed upon. The second one, though, and I'm interested on your input. I also think there is a 
an illusion of freedom that's given to the child where the parent does have controls in place, but the kid doesn't see it. So that a lot of time, for an example, you give your child, hey, go ahead and play in that rock. But in your head, you know that you're there to catch them. You know that that rock is, is keeping them on the forward side. So they're not even free to go to the dangerous part. And you, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, those variables are there. So while the kid thinks I'm free to go climb and do what I want, you've actually already assessed the situation and you know what they can and can't do. So, you know, this, you're saying it's okay, go be free, but you already know they're controlled. You've, you've pretty much scoped it out. And there's a lot of environments you can do that in. So while the child feels they're free and they're getting that full experience of freedom as the adult, you're already 10 steps ahead to know nothing bad is going to happen to this kid, no matter what choice they're free to choose to make. Jump off, climb around, go under, swing through, whatever. So I think there is a sense of giving your child that illusion in a healthy manner. Is is that on the mark or is that made up bullshit? <laughs> <clears throat> no, I, I would agree with that, Zach. You know, we it's, it's first of all, it's tough talking to parents about their kids and what the kids should and should not do. Right? People get very um, emotionally unstable when you tell them not to hit their kids, when you tell them True story. to not control their kids. Um, but what you said and, and how you go about it, right, is you set the terms because you're the adult. Right? We can't have kids running the show. And a lot of a lot of fathers, they they have this fear that if they they do give their kids some freedom or let them kid their kids go experience things on their own, they're they're gonna just keep taking it a step further and a step further and a step further. Right. And, and before you know it, they're going to be out of control. But if you think about that, that's how our society set up. Right. They, they say you can't do this now. Right. Next year, you can't do that. And then this this year, you can't do this. And then the following year, you know, and before you know it, you're completely locked down. You have no freedom and you can't do anything on your own. You have to get permission for everything. So it, there is a line of deception there. Um, I think what you're describing, you know, if, if my son was younger and he was like, Hey dad, I really want to go swimming in that alligator pond. I would be like, all right, you know what, dude, we're going to make that happen. I would go and duct tape all the mouths of the gators and I'd let them go for a swim, right? <laughs> it's my job as a father, but it's, it's like you were saying, we, we have to survey the environment. We have to know what's going on. And <clears throat> to your point, when we don't know what's going on, right? When we're being lazy or we're distracted on our phone, that's when we get outraged, when our kids get into a, a, a dangerous spot because we weren't prepared prior. So now they're going off running, playing on dangerous rocks because we're on our phone or we're talking to another dad about fucking the football game on Sunday and our kid falls and gets hurt. That's on us. That's not on them. That's bad parenting. It isn't um, a child living dangerously. It's bad parenting. How the hell do they know? Right? A kid, if you put them on a roof, you jump off and think you can fly. Most kids, you know, depending on the age. So, no, absolutely, man. Um, you know, I, I think there is a certain element with helicopter parenting, um, overprotecting. You know, parents, it really comes down to fear. And the the beauty of it is when you, when you get rid of that fear and you trust yourself more as a parent and you say, hey, I'm going to make a conscious effort to be aware, to, to check on my kid to make sure he understands what's going on. Um, and then you let him into the environment and let him make decisions himself. That's how he learns. And we need to, we need to see that, you know, we need to be clear about that as a parent. Yeah. And I think to the perception of free range parenting, peaceful parenting being something that allows a child to go become a tyrant is actually, it's not the perception of what's happening It's the projection of that individual and how they would operate. And, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I want more stimulus checks, more stimulus checks, more stimulus. I want more child income because they gave the, hey, we're going to give you this thing. And these people are like, more, 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 more. So they think their kids will think like that. Yeah. Well, if you didn't behave like that, your child wouldn't. If you were like, hey, I don't want the government taking my money. I don't want to be giving them money. Like, I want them totally out of my business. And I don't want your damn stimulus check. Keep it. Just keep me off your radar. I don't want to owe you anything. That individual looking at their kids would think their kid would not i want all the cake because you said i could have as much as i want no they would just eat their i mean my kid would probably eat the whole cake but you would be at the point where you don't think that your kids are going to be the worst of you you know and these free kids they're making choices that are maturing them faster because they're learning consequences you know they're learning oh shoot 
if I do this, that happens. If I do this, that happens. If I eat too much candy, I puke. Well, that sucks because I wanted to stay up and watch a movie. I wanted to go and do something, but my stomach hurts. Now I feel like trash. You know, these these kids learn from their mistakes in the controlled environment to where they know enough and are mature enough to go into an uncontrolled environment and fight and win. That's why we practice. That's why that's why all athletes practice. You practice boxing before you go into your first fight. MMA, everything else. You learn your lessons on a practice mat with a teacher, which in this case is probably siblings, friends, and a parent. And then you go into the world where you're facing a boss. You're facing somebody who's looking to do harm to you. A government that's trying to control you. A society that's trying to get you fat, sick, and nearly dead. Just alive enough to pay your taxes and be functional to society, but not alive enough to fucking revolt against it. You know, and as well as the psychological control, which comes with other people trying to keep you in the bucket when you do try to change. So we're going to dive into those three things. We're going to dive into freedom from government control. We're going to dive into the freedom to fully live out your life on the physical realm. I'm about to sneeze. And I'm like fighting it back while I go, man, I'm not crying. The subject isn't that near and dear to my heart, but <laughs> it's it's real emotional. You know, it really hit me. And also, you know, the psychological control, which is it's going to be saved for last because it's the heaviest. Because there are a lot of lives that they a shot didn't have to be fired, a fist didn't have to be swung, no threat had to be made. In their head, they had beaten themselves down to where they were ever afraid to even stand up. Without anybody holding them down, they were just voluntary slaves. And so we're going to hit that as well. How do you keep your child free from that? And before we dive in, I have to give a shout out to Phil. So Phil Foster and Phil Foster Fitness. If you keep seeing me reposition, I had legs two days ago. Yeah, you've got the hat rocking. Dude, my legs are killing me. They're like dying so i have to keep like repositioning them <laughs> it's just like pain in the best of ways though it hurts so good i got these wheels working so big shout out to phil foster check him out so let's start down this path how do we start with raising our kids free from government control when it seems like the government's trying to get their hands in everything especially the youth yeah we, we did a video on this right they're, they're coming after your kids government is coming to get them um <clears throat> freedom starts in the home you know that's something I, I say often and we have to acknowledge it we have to be aware of it um what you see in society the the limited freedom or the suppression of freedom is direct result of how we've been raising our kids right it, governments just don't come into power and say you must follow all these orders and obey us or we're going to throw you in jail or we're going to take your money or we're going to seize your home and your property they're built up over time and they're built up from parents controlling their kids in the house. These kids go out into the world and they easily submit to authority, right? Authority that has no basis. And <clears throat> the way I look at it is if, if we're going to be men um, who are going to lead our family, who are going to make the best possible home environment and family that we can, we have to have integrity, right? We, we have to have standards that we live by. And we can't say that, yeah, we we want a country that's free. We want we want to have good neighbors and we want to surround ourselves with healthy people. And then the moment that our kids misbehave or overreact or just piss us off, we resort to the exact man that we don't want to be. Right. We get frustrated, angry. We're hitting on them, beating them down. Um, so you don't teach a kid to live by your values in, in those areas. Right. You you teach them the exact opposite. Right, that they're not free, that they're your fucking property, that you control them, and they can't do whatever they want. Only what dad says. So of course they're gonna grow up to be what is mindless drones, right? That's, that's your saying. Um, and and that's they're gonna be government drones and they're gonna follow and submit to arbitrary laws and to to blind obedience. You know, when you look at it the the macro you really dial it all to the way all the way to the micro you know parents want the best for their children but they're not willing to set the, their children up for a better life than they had and it's you know one of the things I, I constantly fall back to is people want you to do well very few people want you to do better than themselves so you'll have friends who are like oh you're doing great you're doing great and then you start doing better than them your, your physique's better than theirs you start making more money um in the content creation they get more followers than you and all of a sudden you're quiet all that support just goes away it's the strangest thing because it's like, bro, I thought we were boys, but we were only boys when I was inferior to you. We weren't boys when I was your peer or better than you. And that that tells you everything you need to know about these parents. You want your kids to do well. Oh, I'm rooting for you, little Timmy. I want you to play these sports and be happy. 
And then little Timmy's like, well, I want to be more than you. I don't want to just fall into a comfortable routine where I've allowed my, my mind, my body, my spirit to begin atrophying as long as my, my comfort level is maintained. I want to be better than that. All of a sudden, mom and dad are like, no, little Timmy, you don't want that. Don't be that free. You don't want to go out and do that. You want to get a nice, comfortable job, pick up twenty to $40,000 of debt on top of your student loan, get the car you can't afford, find somebody that you'll have sex with enough to have children with, but that's it. And then sit and watch a bunch of shows and laugh and then die. That, little Timmy, is what I want for you. So do that or I'm going to beat your ass. You just Whoa. pissed off a lot of people. Whoa. But that's the trajectory, man. That is the path. That's the message that's sent through these sabotaging efforts of a kid who's saying, well, why do we have to do it this way? Why do we have to live this way? Why do we have to work this way? Why do you? Why is it praised when you work on holidays and weekends without pay? Why are you always the guy called in the job for the extra shift? Why don't we see fathers saying no? Why don't we see mothers walking away? Why don't we downsize the house so we can be together more? Why are we chasing this, this carrot? When these kids start asking these questions, it puts the parents in very uncomfortable positions because either A, they don't know. They're like, shit, I just fell into a loop myself. I don't even, I've never questioned why I'm doing this. But also, well, I don't want to change. Changing that is too uncomfortable. And I now have to keep up with the Joneses. And so the child's questions are something that needs to be crushed. It's like an insurrection in a kingdom. The king has to shut down that fire before the, the pickets come out and it's too big to control. Well, you just made your child a drone. You just set your kid up for failure. And what we're talking about is raising kids free from that. So everything I said, you should be telling your children, yeah, why do you have to do two hours of homework? What are you achieving here that your teacher couldn't get done in class? Why isn't the school fo focusing more and giving you guys more activity time with you guys being stuck together, isolated, and masked up? Why does your boss keep calling? You're right. Stand up to him. Quit. Your boss is being a dick. Quit. Your job is just a job. Find a new one. You don't have to work for this dude. So I think a lot of the issue we see with not raising children free from government control is exactly what you said. In the home, they're afraid to abdicate that authority. Just yeah. like the government is doing to a lot of adults right now. Yeah, raise them to to ask questions, to think critically, right? Raise them to not just be free and run around whatever they want to do, but be free to think things and share those ideas. I mean, we live in a society. Who? Wow, I, I think it's like over 15 million kids, you know, almost 15 million, are obese from the ages two to 19. They're listening to the system on what to eat, how to eat, and it's having adverse effects, right? It's making kids unhealthy. A lot of adults suffer from obesity. Um, we, as, as parents, um, our influence, as fathers, our influence is to teach our kids not just the, the freedom to do what we want, but also the freedom to live our lives the way we want, right? What we put into our body. What, what and how we focus and spend our time on. To me, that's freedom, right? Freedom is when I have the, the time where I'm not slaving away uh, in an office or I'm not slaving away at a job that's not benefiting my life. I'm wasting that time. I'm wasting my life. When I have the time to focus on what foods I eat, right, what activities I'm doing, how many times a week I'm going to the gym. I'm not doing any right now, but in the future I will be. <laughs> Some one-arm well, pull-ups and some one-arm push-ups. <laughs> well, when I when I have that freedom, I teach my kids that, right? I teach them that there are certain things in life that are important that I have to set forward, and I have to let them know that you have to take the time to do these things. Right? These are important. This is what's going to shape you. This is who you're going to become. Um, and that doesn't happen if you're always listening uh, to – to the nonsense or the noise of a, of a dysfunctional society. Do you think we're breaking away from the trend? Do you think year by year, more parents are falling away from your job is something you do for 20 years. That's your identity. Listen to the government. They're good. Or do you think we're in an echo chamber? Cause that's the type of people we're just around. No, I think it is improving. Uh, definitely. You know, I think they're, there's only so far that it can go, right, where people feel pain and they have to make a change. Uh, and I, I would say, you know, coming across your work, Zach, and and seeing what you do, guys like Phil Foster, 
right? People see that and they see the results. So they, they're going to want to be a part of it, right? They're going to want to improve. They're going to want to fix their, their relationships, their, their family, their parenting, their finances, their physique. Uh, they're going to want to do good things. And I think as the more we speak up, the more that change happens. And un unfortunately, you know, they just censored uh, one of our images on our YouTube video uh, about pedophilia. Important conversation, right? Parents should know that there's evil people out there trying to expose their kids. They need to be aware of it. And we get a strike against us. But um, no, my, my point is, though, um, <laughs> completely lost my train of thought. Was no, it's good, man. Thumbnail. Yeah, as you're rolling on it, it is important that parents know this. And, you know, while, while you're collecting the thought and what the hell you were just going to say, which is probably something amazing, I do want to point out, I had this discussion with Jackie and it really blew her mind. And I was like, do you know why we're not seeing the Jeslane, uh, that trial and all that that was playing out with the Epstein Island? And then she, she really had no clue. The people involved in that are of such authority and control that they literally have said, you, you don't need to know about this. We don't want you to know about this. And nobody cared. Yeah. that's i mean that is the level of control we have we bring something up about pedophilia our channel gets a strike they remove it and what, what are we doing we're talking about pedophiles why why is that an issue why is making parents aware of how to protect their children from individuals looking to exploit their youth and innocence why is that an issue why do i get a strike but somebody who's literally raping children and flying them in from across the globe onto an island is able to get away with it on national and global levels but my our fucking YouTube channel, which is under a thousand people right now, is gonna we have the attention of YouTube for talking shit about pedophiles and saying how fucked up it is that the world that we're living in where children are exploited. That's how deep this runs. Like literally, that's how deep it runs. Two two influencers coming around talking about how this is a negative. Let's get them. People actually doing this to kids. Well, let's look the other way because you know we don't want to disrupt the the way things are operating. What if you find out that a bunch of global leaders have been touching kids? What's going to happen then? All oh, chaos. We got to make sure we take care of the people, so we just can't be found out because we're in charge of them. They're they're our steward, you know, our stewards of, of our our day to day living. No, as I said in the last video that we recorded, we are not little children to be guided by politicians. They work for us. When that message was lost, I do not understand. But as a parent, put yourself into that picture, not the pedophile picture, but into the the steward. <laughs> Your job is not to control and make your child your child forever. Your job is to empower them and position them to go where it is they want to go in life, to be the supportive, to serve them. They didn't elect you. You brought them into this world. They didn't even ask to be born. You brought your child into the world, and now you serve your child in a masculine manner. You give them the tools needed, the time needed, the energy needed for them to go out into the world so others cannot manipulate them. That is your job. And again, I'm not crying. This you like sinus is hit after that sneeze didn't come out. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, there's there is a lot of manipulation going on in the world. And there are a lot of people who are conditioned. They're psychologically controlled to think a certain way, to be a certain way, to live a certain way. And um, you know, going back to the the free range children raising free kids. You know, we, we have to make sure that we we are allowing them to have their own thoughts, um, whether that's, you know, we want our kids to learn how to think. We want them to be free to think without the influence or control of other people who want to harm them. Um, and unfortunately, this scares parents to a degree because your kids are going to make mistakes, right? They're going to they're going to think wrong or they're going to have bad ideas that they act out on. Uh, but that's okay, right? That's how we learn. And when we keep conditioning our kids to um, not take these risks, we condition them to be safe. And when we condition them to be safe, we condition them to have people psychologically control them. And to me, this is what we see in society. Or this is it's it's all over the place. It's rampant. Um, so I do think in in order to raise um, kids with a free mindset or who think critically. We, we have to make sure in our home, we're in, not only are we allowing it, but we're encouraging it, right? We're, I, I don't know if it was this episode or another one where you said your kids talk back. Yeah, great. Come at me. 
right? Make me have a better argument for what I'm doing. Just because I'm the dad doesn't mean I know everything and doesn't mean that I control everything that you do, right? It's, it's not about being defiant, but it's about questioning things. It's about thinking and it's about having deep conversation, right? If my kids disagree with me, I don't just shut it down because I'm the dad. I really genuinely want to know what's going on in their mind. And I want to be able to help them. I want to be able to have a conversation with them. And when you raise your children like that, they're going to grow up and they're going to have relationships where they can be open. They can be honest. When somebody disagrees with them, they're not going to have an emotional breakdown. They're not going to distance themselves from people, right? They're not going to go and sit in isolation because they're unsure if somebody is talking shit about them or if somebody doesn't like them. They can be free to be who they are. And I think that's the, one of the key ingredients to fighting this bullshit that we see. Absolutely, it is. You know, but and again, we have to be that example, which means we have to live it. So getting over that hurdle, getting over that fear, you know, that the fear to make a mistake, the fear to be ostracized, the fear of being outcast, embrace it. That's fuel. You know, you want to find other people who are embracing it. And you'll find out there are a lot more people living outside of the the buoys that have been set by the government to do their own thing. You know, if if this were all to burn and blow up, you just build it back up. You know, like there's no, well, you failed. Yeah, no, I learned a lesson. I'm going to do it better. And I'm not going to make that mistake again. I might make another one, but I won't make that mistake. You do that enough times. There's a lot of mistakes that you've made, but now you aren't making this next time. Fall down 10, get up 11. It's that easy. But when you're afraid, well, then you don't act. You try to just stay out of the way. And that's how the government gets you. It makes you afraid to do certain things. And that's just, if you pass that to your kids, then of course they're going to be controlled. They're going to be just like you, mom and dad. But that makes you the problem. That also makes you the solution, which brings us to the second thing. Being free from health complications. If you as a mother or father are setting the example, I mean, I was just talking about Phil. We gave him a shout out. You know, it, I'm working out. I'm sore as hell just sitting here talking. <laughs> but it's, it's the best way because I'm making my body strong. Give your children the gift of a full life lived. They can't do that if they're overweight. They cannot, in the literal sense, see the top of the mountain. They can't swing across the, 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 the monkey bars. They can't climb to the top of whatever thing like their friends are. Their friends get to sit on top of the playground. Their friends get to go across the monkey bars. They get to play the floor as lava. While your fat kid gets to sit and watch them and wish he could do it. But he can't. But instead of feeling that pain of not being able to hang out with his friends, he turns to something else. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to climb that thing. I didn't want to swing across that rope. I didn't want to go to my friends and, and go to the beach and have a good time with them because, you know, that's that's for losers. I'm going to do this cool thing like sit here and play more video games that are inactive because that's what my body type wants to do. That's how a kid who's obese at four turns into an obese kid at 14 that's even bigger and heavier and socially isolated. And mom and dad nowhere in there stepped in to set the examples to what right looks like. Running around and playing is what I do with my kids. That That is our family time. And it's not, hey, guys, it's boot camp time. But even sometimes it is boot camp time. I had my son training the other day. He's getting his ass kicked. My daughter as well. This isn't a boy-girl thing. It's a child-parent thing. You know, my wife and I work out frequently. Our kids see it. We make them a part of it. And that means our adventures can be active too. And I see it with you guys. I see all the kayaking and things you guys are doing. You know, you guys are out like living life, experiencing life. It's something to be a part of. It's not something to watch. Like, why the fuck is everybody watching National Geographic instead of going and exploring the, the national, you know, the nature, the wonders that are nature? I mean, it's not hard to go to a local park. It takes, like, little effort for you to go and to figure something out and to just go in and, and see, hey, this is what's around me. We get to go play. We can kick the ball. We can throw the ball. We can do our thing. So at no point, you know, should you as a parent sit there and think, oh, my kid's fatness is not my problem. It's your problem. It's 100% your problem. And it's not going to get better until you set a better example and show your kids, hey, here's why we eat this way. Here's why we got to move our bodies. Here's the cool things you get to do. And guess what? Your kid can go out and do those things free from broken knees and shoulders and all these things that come with being a fat kid. Is that what happened to you, Anthony? You put on weight and then you tried doing a push up and it blew the shoulder out. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it's, it's important to um, have a, a strong physical body to a degree. Um, and I think it's also important to recognize that we, you know, we become healthy because we have the ability to think in the future. And that's something we have to teach our kids, right? Kids don't get that if they just eat a whole bunch of candy, 
um, tomorrow they're going to have a stomach ache. So it's, it's up to us to teach them that if they focus on their health, if they focus on their phys- physical strength, when they become older, it's going to be a benefit, right? They're going to be a free adult in that range. Right? They're going to have physical strength. They're not going to be limited. Um, and being, you know, I can tell you now personally, being limited, what I can physically do sucks. This is just temporary. <laughs> But if it was created from a lifestyle of being unhealthy and I wasn't able to move or function properly, it's devastating. And it's it's heartbreaking to me that people put themselves in these positions. Um, and I, I will say that if you are in that position, get yourself out. Right? There's always a chance that you can crawl out of that hole. You can improve. You can reach out to other men. And you can improve your life. It, it comes slowly. You got to take the steps, but you can do it. No, absolutely. You know, I'm very, very against childhood obesity. My master's thesis was on the the social and economic impact of childhood obesity. And so I've been talking about this for years. This is a, a threat to not just our the national level. Like we're not just making our citizens weaker, you know, but they're not as smart. And And put that aside, your child will not have a full life lived. That's what really hit me. It wasn't the impact on America. It's not the impact on the healthcare system. It's not the the impact on transportation and things that we don't even realize are costing so much more money because everybody's heavier. It's the kid who can't go and play with his friends because he literally can't keep up. It's the kid who's afraid to go to the beach because he doesn't want to take his shirt off or he doesn't want to be there with the shirt on made fun of. It's the the girl who doesn't want to go to the dance because she does none of the dresses fit her and she doesn't get to have that prom experience or anything. You know, the kids that build all this confidence from playing sports and having a team. Well, if you're not able to perform, you can't be on the team because the kids will make fun of you for holding them back. Or you'll just not even join because you'll know your limitations. And therefore, you never get the experience of working with the team. I played football from third grade to graduating high school or sixth grade through high school. Dude, those, those are great times of just running around with the dudes, just have my own thing where we had a team, we had a mission, cool stuff. Join the military. I'm part of the team, you know, getting out leading my kids and coaching them. I have the energy to do all that. If I was obese as a kid, maybe I was a lineman, <laughs> but I probably wouldn't have played football and I, I wouldn't have been able to pl- join the military. And then I would have been a much slower, um, less involved father because I wouldn't have the energy or physical capability to keep up. Like literally we're seeing fathers who were fat kids unable to keep up with their kids. And these kids have lower life expectancy rates than their parents. That's fucked up. And that is something that is one of those hills that I think it's important enough for us to really step back and recognize, are we doing our best for them? If you're jacked, but your kid's fat, are you really doing your best for that kid? Are you doing your best for yourself? You're letting your kid just fail in front of you because it's easier than addressing the uncomfortable conversation of saying, hey, we need to stop eating this way. We've got to work together as a family. We made a video on family goals. If your child is overweight, that should be the top goal you have. Let's get ourselves locked in. And I'm not saying turn into strict you know every single calories counted you got to be mean about it make it fun here's some snacks here's some carrots pick them out let's play with it let's throw them around let's start eating these other things here's a a kid snack we have a kid snack bin it's filled eat whatever the fuck you want as much as you want it's got apples it's got pears it's got bananas it's always gone and the kids always sit and eat their dinner because they know i'm gonna eat because i'm hungry here's good fuel and then when they get back we have our dinner time our kids understand well if it's about to be dinner not to eat it you know, they learned the lesson because they have, oh man, I'm too full for dinner and all I have is apples and I really wanted some chicken parm or whatever. Okay, cool. You don't have to eat. I'm, I'm going to eat your thing and that's probably not good for me, <laughs> but it's it's something that they learn and you do together. So you don't have to make it some taboo thing that's uncomfortable for everybody. The kid feels like, oh, I can't have a snack. Dude, they make hundred calorie ice cream packs. Let that be your one dessert of the week. A nice little, you can still experience your life while getting your child healthier. Yeah. You know, we, we talk about the family uh, dinner, family meals, and you want to make sure that you're, you're not, if, if you're going to get healthy, <laughs> don't make it this chaotic, overburdening um, dilemma that your kids now have to face, right? Support them. Talk They'll to them hate health. It. You'll, you'll ease, they will yeah. hate health. <laughs> ease into it, right? It, it's a tough transition. So definitely take your time. Uh, don't, if you don't, don't know how, it. we've said the dude's name like 10 times. Talk to Phil Foster, but I mean, there's there's people doing this. This is what they do. 
or reach out to Anthony or I. We have others. We can we can work with you, tell you what we're doing with our kids. You know, but this isn't a death sentence if it's not if you address it. If you don't address it, it is a death sentence, an early death sentence. So the two of us have found a way. You know, the dad bod, fuck that. We're building father figures, you know, healthy relate marriages. We were attractions still around and then leading children who are physically capable. It's not accidental. It's just a, it's just the way things are. You made it a priority. You made it work and you can do the same. So as Anthony said, it, it might come across like I'm taking a shot, but it, it's from a position of love. I want you to do well. I want your family to come together, but you've got to, you've got to hear how bad this can be for you to realize, Hey, maybe it's time to get off my ass and there's no better time than now. I mean, it's Christmas. Give yourself that gift. Have your nice Christmas dinner and be like, all right, it's go time after this. And then lock things in. And it can be enjoyable. But that leads to the, talking about <laughs> heavy, the meat and potatoes of this discussion. Raising children who are free from the psychological manipulation that is going on in m movies, radio, TV, schools, colleges, fucking celebrities, sports, Everywhere. concerts. There's nothing I can say. Money. <laughs> nothing I can say. Polit oh, my God. The list is going to keep going in my head. <laughs> Every single arena, people are trying to subvert the parent's authority and insert their own into your child's mind. And if you do not arm them with a the defense to understand what's going on, your child is vulnerable and they are going to be snatched up. Their minds. It's not their body. It's not a kidnapping. Once their mind is owned, it doesn't matter. They have them. And now the values that you didn't defend are being replaced. Your lack of a presence in that child's life was a present to these evil individuals because they're just going to take that kid and they're going to turn him to exactly what they want. And unfortunately, it's not to the benefit of you or your child. It's to the benefit of whatever entity grabbed them. Yeah. Well, and you know, listen, we get that all the time, right? We get questions or comments about how do I protect my kid or defend them against what's going on in the world, right? Critical race theory, um, transgenderism, all, all these things that are showing up and having influence on our kids. And my one thing, what I always say is start in your home, right? If, if you prepare your kid in your home, they're going to go out into the world and these ideas are going to seem exactly what they are. They're going to be seen as manipulation. <clears throat> if you're not manipulating your kid in home, when, when we control our kids in the house, when we manipulate them, when we abuse our power over them, we set them up to normalize it. Um, and then they go out into the world and they'll see a president or they'll see a school teacher who tells them this is what they have to do. This is how they have to be. Even if it goes against what they feel or think, they'll follow suit. And I think to me, that's we, we don't usually connect those dots, right? We always want to fight the enemy outside the gate. We, we never look at about what's going on inside. And that's the best way to combat it, right? If, if you're worried about society, influence your kids in a negative way. Make sure what you're doing and how you're behaving and how you're acting in your home is showing your kid not to be manipulated, not to be coerced, or not to believe people who are going to hurt you and then apologize for it over and over again, right? It's like a repeated pattern. Um, and we, we see this everywhere, right? People get accused of something, something bad happens and they say, oh, we're sorry, you know, we made a mistake. We don't know why the economy crashed in 08, right? But we're going to fix it this time. And now it's 2022 and the same things are happening again. And we continue to believe it and we continually go out and we vote for these psychopaths to control our lives. If you want to get or eradicate the, the uh, manipulation and the coercion in the world, starts in the home. Teach your kids to fucking stand up for themselves. Stop pushing them down. <laughs> Damn, man. Uh, what the fuck is in your coffee? <laughs> <laughs> I I have nothing to add to that. That is absolutely <laughs> it. You know, we're going to wrap it up here. Listen, if you're doing it to your kids, you want your kids to see the enemy. If you're doing it, your kid, your child will never want to see you as the enemy. So therefore, if the government's doing what the dad did, then it's okay. Because my, why would my dad do something that he shouldn't have done? Why would my mom do anything that she should not have done? They're not the enemy. So when these people do it to me, they're not the enemy. And therefore, they never even look or to put up a wall or to give a second look at what's happening to them from the government, the individual, the celebrity, the person looking to cause them harm. 
the individual, the evil individual looking to just absolutely destroy their lives, they won't even see it coming because that person's acting just like their father did. They're acting just like their mother did. And if that was okay, why would it not be okay now? Until their life is destroyed and they, they don't even know why. Anthony, that was incredibly well said. To everybody that tuned in, this is another episode of the Oaken Rock Fatherhood. Take the lessons we're sharing here and apply them to your home. You want children free. You want children who are living free, truly, objectively free lives as the best they can and as every area that they can. Free from government control, free from preventable health complications, and free from psychological control from those looking to take them and use them for everything they're worth so that that other individual can get all that they want. Like, subscribe, share, more than anything, protect your family by changing your life.